So this video is going to walk you through the three basic gas laws. In addition, we'll go through the combined gas law. So our three basic gas laws, we have Boyle's law, Charles law, and Gay-Lussac's law. Okay? Our three variables that influence our gas laws are pressure, volume, and temperature. Okay, the reason for three different laws is that each law, the one has a constant temperature, a constant pressure, and a constant volume. To organize this better, to have everything, I'd like you to divide your paper into three sections, dividing it, looking at it landscape to three sections, to model after my chart that I have here. You're going to title the top of it, each section as the law, and then follow along with me. And after each section, I'll pause. Once we've done all the sections, on the back side of this paper, you will put an example of each law on the back side. Or if you would write small, which you can, you can fold your paper in half. Like so, and you'll put the law information on the top and your example on the bottom. So up to you, if you write very large, you do it on the back side. If you write smaller, you'll do it on the bottom. Okay. So back to the laws, we have Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is at a constant temperature. An example of this would be if you have a balloon. I use balloons for all of the examples. It's just something tangible that we use often. For this, if I have a balloon at a very low pressure and I put it under high pressure, that pressure is going to restrict my balloon. Okay, this is outside of my balloon. It's gonna push down on my balloon more and more. It's gonna compact my balloon and the volume of the air inside my balloon is going to shrink. Okay, so at a low pressure, I have a high volume. So I have a low P and a high V. Then my second scenario, after I've added pressure, as my pressure increases, my volume decreases. Volume should be in liters or milliliters. And remember that a milliliter is equal to a centimeter cubed. Okay. So, like I said, as pressure decreases, volume increases. As pressure then is higher, volume decreases. So we notice that they're moving in opposite directions. So we can say overall that as pressure increases, volume decreases. And this is an inverse relationship. So they're moving in opposite directions. Okay. To show this, we say that P1 times V1, or your initial volume times your final volume, is going to be equal to your final pressure times your final volume. Because as pressure goes up, volume comes down. So on the other side, we're going to have a low volume or a low pressure and a high volume, so the numbers will always equal each other because of the relationship. So take a moment to copy down just Boyle's Law. The next law that we have is Charles' Law. Charles' Law is at a constant pressure, so our pressure isn't changing, but our volume and our temperature is. If I have my balloon, this is like my balloon on a hot day, my pressure is always constant. I have a low temperature inside, and I take my balloon outside, that increase in temperature. Because that increase in temperature, my volume is also going to increase. So at the beginning, I have a small temperature and a small volume. Afterwards, I have a high temperature and a high volume. So that means that as my temperature is increasing, as is my volume. Therefore, they are directly proportional. They have a direct relationship between the two. To show that, we have V1 divided by T1 is equal to V2 divided by T2. Because as our volume goes up here, so does our, and our volume will then come up over here. That means that our temperature increases here and our temperature increases here. And they have to increase equally or decrease equally. So I'll give you a moment to copy this down. The third law that we have is Guy-Lussac's law. Okay, his is at constant volume. So the balloon is staying the same volume. I'm not um, changing anything to the volume of it. So this would be like if it had a very rigid, so let's say that my balloon is very hard, some of the hard plastic balloons. Okay, I 
I'm starting at a low temperature, or excuse me, a low pressure, and I'm going to increase the pressure on my balloon, on the air inside my balloon, okay, because it's a hard, rigid balloon. As I have a nice increase in pressure, that's going to make those molecules really agitated and move all around, but they can't expand my volume at all because it's hard balloon, it's fast in the way it is. So therefore, they're going to create a lot of friction within themselves by moving back and forth a lot, and that's going to increase my temperature. So I'm going to go from a cold balloon to a hot balloon because I'm increasing my pressure. So I start with low pressure, low temperature, and I increase to high pressure and high temperature. Therefore, as my pressure increases, as does my temperature, so they have a direct relationship where they're directly related. Therefore, just like as Charles' law, I have P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. So I'll give you a moment to copy that down as well. Okay, a couple of examples now. We'll start with example one. Okay, I like to make T-charts for these as well, just like we did for our specific heat problems. So my T-chart is my one is my initial information, two is my final information. I tell you that I have a pressure, volume, and temperature are my three variables for gases. So for my initial pressure, I'm given 104.1 kilopascals, so kPa. I'm told I have initial volume of 478 centimeters cubed, and my temperature is going to stay constant. Okay, My pressure is going to decrease to 88.2 kilopascals, and I want to look for my volume. So knowing this is what I have to work with, my pressure is changing, my volume is changing, but my temperature is staying the same. That tells me it has to be a Boyle's Law equation because Boyle's Law has P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2, all of the four of the variables that I'm looking for. I rearrange my equation to solve for what I'm looking for, which is my V2, by pushing, dividing both sides by P2. So I get P1, V1 over P2 is equal to V2. I plug in my variables from above. 104.1 kilopascals is my pressure. My initial volume is 478 centimeters cubed. Divided by my final pressure, which is 88.2 kilopascals. I take my 101.4, my 478, divided by 88.2, and I get 564 centimeters cubed. Okay? This makes sense because... As my pressure is decreasing, they are inversely proportional, therefore my volume should increase. Okay. Once you've copied this down, on your homework questions, there's Boyle's Law worksheet number one. Go ahead and try problem number one on it. You should receive the answer of 240 milliliters. Okay, example number two. Example number two, I again make my t-shirt. I say that my pressure is held constant. Knowing my pressure is held constant automatically tells me I will use Charles' law. Okay. I have an initial volume of 8.98 decimeters cubed. Now, as long as I'm staying at decimeters, it doesn't really matter what my units are in volume as long as they stay constant. Okay, so I'm going to look for decimeters cubed for my final volume. I'm starting at 300, or excuse me, 38.8 degrees Celsius, and I'm ending at negative 39.9 degrees Celsius. Now remember back to the previous video, and we said that for our gas law equations, our temperature always has to be in Kelvin, and to get there from Celsius, we need to add 273 to our Celsius temperature. So for both of my temperatures, I need to add 273 to them to convert them from, cal from Celsius into Kelvin. So when I do that, I get 311.8 Kelvin and 233.1 Kelvin. Okay. Like I said before, I have a constant pressure, so that means I'll use Charles' Law equation. So I'll give you a second to copy down the variables. 
Okay, so like we have Carl, Charles' law equation, which is V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. I rearranged solving for V2 by multiplying both sides by T2 to cancel it out. And I get V1 times T2 divided by T1. Now my equation has been rearranged. Please rearrange your equations first with just variables before you plug in your numbers. Now I need to plug in. I have my initial volume, 8.98 decimeters, times my final temperature, 233.1 Kelvin, divided by my initial temperature, 311.8 Kelvin. When I plug this into my calculator, I get 6.71 decimeters cubed. Again, I ask myself, does this make sense? Well, my temperature decreased, therefore my volume must also decrease. And it does. It goes from 8.98 down to 6.71. Once you've copied this down, go ahead and try on your Charles Law worksheet number one. When you're done, you should get, with proper significant figures, 1,900 milliliters. Example number three. Example number three tells me that I have a constant volume. So I make my D chart and I put dashes in for both of my volumes. That tells me that I have a Gay-Lussac's problem. For my pressure, I'm told that I have 4.0 atmospheres. I'm looking for my final pressure. I'm told that I have 330 Kelvin and that decreases down to 300 Kelvin. Okay. Luckily, I'm starting with Kelvin so I don't need to convert anything. I know that my equation for Gay-Lussac's law is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2, and I'm solving for my final pressure. I rearrange my equation by multiplying both sides times my final temperature, and I get P1 times T2 divided by T1. This is equal to my final pressure. I plug in my variables, 4 atmospheres times 300 Kelvin, divided by 330 Kelvin, and I get an answer of 3.6 atmospheres. Once you've gone ahead and tried that, then please do my example that I've put on the board. The example on the board reads, at a constant volume, a gas starts at 100.1 kilopascals and 290 Kelvin. It is put under pressure to 150.1 kilopascals. Find its final temperature. Again it reads, at a constant volume, a gas starts at 100.1 kilopascals and 290 Kelvin. It is put under pressure to 150.1 kilopascals. Find its final temperature. Once you plug in it for the equation, rearrange it, you will get the final temperature of 430 Kelvin. So in life, usually things are not held constant. As much as we'd like them to be, things are always changing, and gas laws are the same way. So what happens if all three variables change, my pressure, my volume, and my temperature? What do I do? Well, luckily, we can use something called a combined gas law, and notice that all it is is simply combined all three of my basic gas laws together. I have Boyle's law, P1V1 equals P2V2. I have Charles' law which is V1 T1 over V2 T2, and I have Gay-Lussac's law, which is P1 T1 over P2 T2. They've just been squished together. Okay. So anytime that it says something is not held constant, your variables are changing, you'll notice this when you make your T-chart and you only have one area you're looking for. So my first example says that if I have 50 milliliters excuse me, of gas at STP. Now what is STP? We'll back up over here. STP stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure. Standard Temperature is 273 Kelvin 
and one atmosphere is my standard pressure. So now I know if something says it's at STP, standard temperature and pressure, I'll plug in these variables and these values for pressure and temperature. So back to my problem, at standard temperature and pressure is brought to 300 Kelvin and five atmospheres. What is its volume now? So I make my T chart of my initial and final. I write down my variables of P, V, and T. I have one atmosphere as my initial pressure. My initial volume is 50 milliliters, and my initial temperature is 273 Kelvin. My final pressure is five atmospheres. My final temperature is 300 Kelvin, and I'm looking for my final volume. I'm using my combined gas law equation because I have all three variables are changing. Nothing's held constant. So I take my equation P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2. I need to isolate my variable of V2. So this is where the chemistry is now stopped and the algebra begins. I divide both sides by P2 and I multiply both sides by T2 so that way, I get an equation of my volume equal to T2 times P1 times V1 divided by T1 times P2. Remember to rearrange your variables first, then plug them into an equation. So now I solve for V2. I simply rewrote it towards the top again so I have more room. I plug in my variables I'm given from my T chart, 300 Kelvin times my initial pressure of one atmosphere times my initial volume of 50 milliliters divided by the quantity of 273 Kelvin, my initial temperature, times my final pressure of five atmospheres. When I plug this in my calculator, 300 times one times 50 divided by 273 divided by five I get the answer of 11 milliliters. I look back at my problem. One atmosphere in five atmospheres only has one significant figure, so I round to 10 milliliters. Now you try. I have a gas at 330 Kelvin at 710 kilopascals. It's cooled down to 315 Kelvin and 650 kilopascals and two or excuse me 25 milliliters what is its initial volume so again a gas at 330 kelvin at 710 kilopascals is cooled down to 350 kelvin and 650 kilopascals its final volume is 25 milliliters and what is its initial volume. So you're gonna do the same setup, except now looking for initial volume, V1, rearrange your equation, and you should get your initial volume to be 24 milliliters. This concludes the video about your basic gas loss. Please rewatch again if you have any questions.